We go go. Hello everyone and welcome to the first Gloria Duhali guest lecture series on communication research. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Kusha Diram Perez, faculty of the Bachelor of Arts in Communication program of the Davao del Norte State College, your host for the, today's event. So the, the Davao del Norte State College, through its Department of Communication and Media Arts and London School of Public Relations, Indonesia, is holding the first Gregorio Duhali guest lecture series in communication research. The webinar series aims to learn about the basic concepts and general processes and methods involved in communication research. Furthermore, furthermore, this also helps to provide an opportunity to converse with the experts in the field of communication education around the world. So personally, I am very thrilled to have uh, various audiences from different countries. So basing on our registration, we have uh, different participants. We have from Sri, Lan uh, Sri Lanka, we have from Pakistan, Nigeria, and of course here in the Philippines. We also have uh, partners with their staff from Indonesia. So uh, welcome, ma'am, sir, for this lecture series. Uh, also, we are now live via YouTube. So this is the first of the three lectures that we will be having for this lecture series. And I just want to inform everyone uh, to please fill out the evaluation form after the lecture proper for you to be able to receive your certificates. So uh, my colleagues here will post the link in the here in the chat box there as you can see there for your access so you may uh, fill out your um evaluation form after the lecture proper so before we begin i just want to state some webinar etiquettes so a gentle reminder for each and everyone to please uh, turn off your microphones when you are not talking uh, because extra noise could be a disturbance uh, not only to the presenter but 
um, also to the other audiences as well. Okay, so if you want to ask questions, do not directly speak up unless if the presenter allowed you to do so. Uh, if you want to address also any query about the lecture, there will be an allotted time for a question and answer portion. So you may click the uh, raise hand button here in the Google Meet, or you may type in your questions on the chat, uh, chat box here so that uh, I will be the one who will read the question for you. Okay, so in this juncture, to give us an overview of what this activity is all about, please help me welcome faculty of the Bachelor of Arts and Communication program of Davao de Norte State College, my colleague, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Daniel Fritz Valera. Thank you very much, Chris. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, loud and clear. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, to our participants for this afternoon's webinar, welcome to the first uh, Gregorio Dohali lecture series. Uh, all over the Philippines, we have participants from the big universities as well as also from other uh, universities abroad. And of course, to our uh, partners uh, in conducting this uh, program, the LSPR Communication and Business Institute. Just to give you a background of what, what is actually this webinar series, uh, for this semester, uh, Davo del Norte State College, uh, through the Department of Communication and Research Extension and Production Division, welcomes you to our first guest lecture series. This lecture series is actually named after uh, of our late Mayor Gregorio Dohali for his contribution and in his vision to Davao del Norte in making education accessible to all, especially the marginalized sector of our society. We hope that this webinar will help our faculty, researchers, and students with the basic concepts and the general processes and methods involved in communication research. It is really intended for those who wish to imbibe the additional skills in communication research. There will be three lecture series that will deal with this uh, program. It started this afternoon, the Global Framework Capability Research, followed with the two research methodologies, the content analysis and survey design, respectively. We are very happy to co-organize this event with one of our global partners, the London School of Public Relations, Communication and Business Institute, located at Jakarta, Indonesia, the leading graduate school of communication and the first inclusive higher education institute in Indonesia. Again, thank you and welcome to our first guest lecture series. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Daniel Fretzel-Valiana, for that review. So uh, I'm sure all of us could benefit a lot of this lecture series now. And also, thank you so much for the London, the London School of Public Relations and this Institute Jakarta, from Jakarta, Indonesia, for partnering with us and for giving us this um, amazing lecture because uh, I'm sure that our audiences and our students from the Avado Norte State College would benefit a lot from this communication research uh, lecture series. So um, at this juncture, we will be hearing a message from the director of the Internal International Relations LSPR. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Ms. Candy Hernandez. Thank you so much, Krisha. Thank you so much, Daniel. Salamat siyang samwanya. Good afternoon. Magandang tanghali po. On behalf of LSPR and Communication and Business Institute, we'd like to thank Davao del Norte State College for the opportunity to co-host this first Gregorio Dohali guest lecture. It's really such an opportunity for us. And we're, as I mentioned, uh, this will not happen without the help of Daniel Fritz. Thank you so much for making this happen with LSPR and especially here in Indonesia. It's such an honor for LSPR to participate in this event together with Dr. Rendo Dani, our Director for Research Center, 
who will be sharing to us all about the research on global capability framework Indonesian perspective. Actually, having this all uh, online, it's really a privilege for us to like really learn from each other. So this is what we call our um, main uh, target ever since the start of the pandemic, having learning without borders and education without borders. And it's really a privilege for LSPR to be partnering with and working together with our university partners from all around the world. And and we're very grateful because this is our first with Davao del, uh, Davao del Norte State College, and we look forward forward to have more um, participation and more collaboration between our university here in Indonesia and of course in the Philippines. We look forward to have more, not only guest lecturing, but maybe once everything is uh, open, um, we will have more um, like student uh, visits or guest lecturing, not only online, but also physically. Again, maraming salamat sa inyong lahat, and we do look forward for this great, great event for this afternoon. As I pass on the screen back to our host, uh, Krisha, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ma'am Candy Hernandez. So now I am sure that our audiences as well as our speaker is ex are excited to, uh, to start the series proper. So let's not wait for the grass to grow. I will be introducing our speaker for today's lecture. So our speaker, he is a lecturer and head of the research center lspr communication and business institute he earned his bachelor's degree at the hasanuddin university in 1996 his master's degree at the university of indonesia in 2002 and also got his doctoral degree from murdoch university perth western australia in 2019 he passionately focuses on area research such as political public relations government public relations, propaganda, presidential communication, political communication, mass communication, and also in journalism. He also touches in, uh, teaches in, in several subjects, such as introduction to mass communication, introduction to communication science, scientific writing methods, and communication theory in the undergraduate program, and then political communication, seminar and colloquium in the postgraduate program. It is my pride and honor to represent our speaker for this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Dr. Rendro Dani. Let's give him a virtual round of applause. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Thank you yes, very sir. much. Yeah, yes, sir. Loud and clear, sir. Yes, sir. So please allow me to present my presentation first. Can you see my presentation? No. Yes, Dr. Android. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Kamusta? Magandang tanghali. Yeah, uh, my colleagues from Philippines yeah, uh, told me that. So yeah, dear lecturer students, all participants, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me to be a speaker in this very important webinar series. I am honored and pleased to present uh, the result of our research to all of you. And I hope it will be useful and inspiring to all of you. So uh, <clears throat> you might wondering how exactly to become an excellent and professional PR and what capabilities one should have to become a great public relation practitioner who can work anywhere around the around the world of course so uh, today I will present uh, the finding of my uh, research it is called the global capability framework 
Global Capability Framework for the Public Relation and Communication Management Profession. So this is uh, the Indonesian perspective. I need to... Uh, if you have, if you want to download the our full report, full report, I will give you the link. Just a moment, please. I will put it on the chat box. So everybody can download the full report. Uh, of our research. So, um, yeah, where is my presentation? <laughs> okay. We have two uh, uh, version. Uh, on the left hand, it's uh, in English version, and the right hand is uh, Indonesian version. So uh, this is our my team, yeah, the researchers. I have uh, four uh, lecturer accompany me to do this research, and we have uh, supported by public relation organization in Indonesia, Perhumas, and also Association of Public Relation in Indonesia. So this is. Uh, uh, the collaboration between London School of Public Relations with Global Alliance and University of Huddersfield in UK. Okay, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> uh, okay, um, may, I think I have to introduce him before I go. Uh, uh, my name is Rendra Dani. Yeah, yeah, dear lecturers. Yeah. Uh, I'm a lecturer of uh, LSPR uh, as uh, Communication and Business Institute Jakarta, Indonesia, as mentioned before. My educational background is in PR, but actually my working experience is uh, was a journalist. Yeah. I have never worked as a PR practitioner. Uh, so uh, just in the in uh, scientific yeah, in the academic field I am interested in public relation because uh, previously my duty as journalist in the early 2000 I was uh, observed observed how poor the Indonesian president when communicate with the public and I observed directly at the presidential palace at that time and that was drive me to be interested in studying public relation and continue my study in political PR. So uh, how, how about in the in your countries? Uh, can you observe uh, public relation practice in your country? Are they good enough? How about the uh, government PR? in your countries are they good okay i think uh yeah this has become a problem especially for the government to be to inform their uh, policy to public <clears throat> so let's see the project what is this what is the global capabilities in public relation and communication management this project is a, a worldwide project uh, aimed to mapping the core of PR capabilities. And this uh, project is uh, the initiative of Global Alliance and supported uh, by uh, University of Huddersfield, UK. There are nine countries have already completed this uh, uh, project, their study. And the other six uh, countries have developed their frameworks, uh, which is started in 2019 in the uh, second wave. So Indonesia is the second wave country that is uh, completed the, the research. We are the first country to complete 
this study, which started from uh, May 2019 to October 2020. So almost two years. So uh, this is the map of uh, countries that already are ongoing process in this research. And uh, in uh, ASEAN countries, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia is uh, doing this uh, research. Maybe uh, Philippines also will conduct the same research. If need, <laughs> yeah. So what is this? This is the uh, project to uh, measure the competency and the capabilities. Uh, there is a two version of com uh, 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 PR uh, competencies and capabilities that uh, being measured by many uh, studies. But we use the capability approach that's uh, different with the competence approach. So uh, maybe you can uh, read the uh, complete uh, uh, writing in our uh, booklets because this is uh, I have 30 slides here so I need to uh, explain it um, faster <laughs> because so many yeah uh, maybe I just uh, explain the research design this uh, project is divided uh, is uh, doing we did this uh, research in three steps uh, methods uh, in uh, collecting data. First, we uh, doing a uh, Delphi methods. Delphi methods in uh, three round, and after that, we supposed to do a survey to collect uh, to collect data and to uh, uh, make a. Uh, different result, but uh, in our country, we have uh, so uh, less uh, result. Uh, around, I think around 30 respondents gave their response to our survey. So we asked the UK to change uh, the, the the methods because uh, it is low. Uh, depends on the uh, the character of the country. So we increase the the participant the respondent by doing more in focus group discussion so we did uh, seven focus group discussion and uh, to answer this uh, research question uh, there are there are three research questions here is there a shared set of pr capabilities that defines the profession globally. Secondly, what, if any, are the variation of region, culture, and by stakeholder group? And uh, last one, how can such a framework be a practical value for professional development at individual, national, regional, and global level? So in the Delphi methods, we, uh, uh, distribute uh, and we uh, we distribute a form uh, to be filled by pra PR practitioner, uh, PR academician, and uh, employee PR employee to uh, to have uh, to make to ask them what are the most important capabilities for the PR professional. So. Here is the uh, Delphi mod methods. In the first round, we have uh, 20 uh, participants, mostly uh, uh, practitioner and academicians. So, and the uh, second round is also 20. And the third round is we have only uh, 18. So, uh, the 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 form of the uh, 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 the the form of that we distribute is 
to ask the panelists or participant to put the uh, what they think what they know what they think uh, about the most important thing of uh, pr capabilities and we divide it into three boxes the first box is we ask we ask all the uh, panelists to uh, mention about in the strategic communication capabilities category so we have uh, uh, us around uh, three or five uh, or more if they want to mention any uh, other anything that they think is uh, most important uh, capabilities in and uh, in the second box of the delphi methods we also provide a box that we ask the panelists to fill the operational communication capabilities category. So uh, uh, we have many, many uh, response. And here is the, the most important. And we uh, actually, we have so many. And we uh, have to filter it. And we uh, <coughs> uh, pick up eight of them, which is uh, uh, similar each other or the most important thing that many of the panelists uh, write the same thing. <clears throat> so here is here is the, 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 the last box, the third box that we ask them to uh, mention about generic in the generic professional capabilities category. And we have also many uh, response from the panelists. And we have uh, uh, matched each other and pick up uh, eight of them, which is, uh, we, 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 which is uh, the most important uh, capabilities of this uh, uh, public relation. So uh, after gathering the first round uh, uh, opinion from the panelists, we then uh, uh, fill in the in the, on on one list and send them again to the the same panelists, the twenty panelists, to uh, ask them uh, prioritize prioritize uh, the uh, uh the capabilities that already submitted by by them and then we get uh we pick up 18 uh capabilities from uh so many capabilities that we found in the first round and then we have here 18 capabilities and then in the last round in the third round we send again this this uh, the result of the second round to to be able to find uh, 10 core capabilities of public relation and here we are here is the here are the capabilities 10 capabilities that we have uh, from the delphi methods uh, and uh, the rank is uh, based on the score that already uh, that submitted by the panelists. <clears throat> so we have here uh, 10 capabilities, PR capabilities. And then after uh, finding these uh, 10 uh, imp most important capabilities of public relation, then we uh, send, um, uh, make a questionnaire and uh, distribute a survey, online survey, but uh, uh, we, as we, as I mentioned before, we only have a very small response. So we change into the, the, the focus group discussion and interviews. In the interviews, <coughs> we interview uh, three, uh, prominent public relation uh, practitioner and also 
former chairperson of Perhumas. Perhumas is uh, the organization of uh, public relation, the, the biggest uh, organization of public relation in Indonesia. And we uh, interview them to get in order to get any uh, some backgrounds of the uh, capabilities, PR capabilities, and the situation of the uh, public relation, the development of public relation, and uh, about uh, anything that related to the uh, educational or curriculum in public relation in the uh, university. <coughs> So uh, to uh, get the uh, the uh, uh, after we have these two uh, steps, we then go to the the last uh, uh, methods. It is a group discussion. We have seven focus group discussion discussion. We totally 38 participants or panelists. Here is the profile of our participant. And this is the location of our participant. We actually uh, have uh, from uh, eight cities and seven provinces, provinces uh, around Indonesia. And then after uh, doing the uh, we collect the data and then we summarize them and we are finally able to uh, establish or mention uh, list the 10 capabilities in here in the left hand and also sub capabilities yeah so for example here is the top three capabilities we have uh, most of them agree with our uh, Delphi methods that we have before. Most of the participants in the seven group discussion agree that the most important thing for public relation is to build organizational or personal credibility and trustworthiness. So this is the top uh, capabilities and to reach these capabilities you have to develop and maintain trust among stakeholders so this is the three capabilities that we also receive or obtain from the uh, group discussion you develop and maintain organization and personal good report. So, so this is the sub capabilities to support this uh, capability to reach the uh, these capabilities also in the second capabilities to manage issue and handling crisis management and communication we also have three sub capabilities here we have the critical analytic anal and analytical thinking develop maintain and rehearse crisis communication plans you build effective team to handle crisis and uh, the third uh, capabilities is to understand and able to work within an ethical framework so uh, basically uh, we have uh, almost same yeah uh, the 10 capabilities that we have in the in the uh, in the Delphi methods uh, but also there is also, uh, another additional uh, there is additional that uh, most of the uh, participant in the FGD in the group discussion think that this is this capability should be added in the top priority top 10 top 10 capabilities so we added uh, some capabilities yeah that not not uh, included in the uh, in the uh, Delphi methods. So here is the uh, the next three capabilities: number four, number five, number six. Here you can read, and also the sub capabilities here. And this is the last four capabilities 
that we have that is that the uh, participant and uh, our our panelists think that these are the most important uh, capabilities that must have by a PR uh, professional. So number seven, number eight, number nine, and number ten. All of them is uh, ten capabilities. You can read on our uh, full report that you can download it and also the sub capabilities so uh, this is some uh, is a kind of guidance basically is uh, guidance and uh, the, the opinion of practitioner uh, academician and employer that they think these are the core capabilities for public relation to be yeah to be mastered uh, globally, we also um, uh, compare our result, and this is the global capability framework that being uh, uh, resulted from uh, the first wave. There are three categories from these, from all of the capabilities. There is uh, communication capabilities, organizational capabilities, professional capabilities. Yeah. Uh, these are the result of nine countries that already uh, did research in the in the first uh, in the first wave, and we also uh, want to see where is the position of Indonesian perspective of the PR our practitioner academician is it. There is there any match of uh, capabilities with the global capabilities, and then uh, we, we can see as you can see here, our ten capabilities is also related with the global capabilities by country. So uh, here is uh, in a, in a red Indonesian perspective, and uh, the nine countries that already. Uh, did uh, the project uh, two years ago? Yeah, in the before us. Yeah, in the in the first wave, and also we try to match. Yeah, uh, this is the the graphic. Yeah, and this is the the key capabilities that we compare from global versus Indonesian perspective. As you can see. All of our uh, uh, capabilities, PR capabilities that we have from our participant is uh, matched with the global capabilities, the global framework. Uh, so the difference is that uh, only the priority, for example, uh, the first priority of global framework is to align communication strategy with organizational purpose and value. In our result, we have this uh, capability also, but in the fourth rank, yeah, in the fourth, yeah, on the list. Uh, on the other hand, our first, uh, the most important uh, capabilities that we found is to build and enhance organizational reputation is become number uh, f yes number six yeah in the global so is it is just the the priority of the uh, uh, capabilities but um, most of them is basically uh, similar or same so the conclusion we can conclude the three research question that we have here before is there a shared set of pr capability that capabilities that define the professions globally our conclusion is there is a widely shared set of public relation and communication capability that help define the profession globally resource number question number two what 
are the variation by region if any and by stakeholder group yeah we as as i mentioned before this slide there are minor but significant variation between countries capability set particularly concerning the social role of public relation and in the use of terminology and last uh, research question how how can such a framework be of practical value of professional development as individual national regional and global level the research uh, conclusion is the research project has produced a piece of work which offer new direction for defining and understanding the public relation and communication management profession and a valuable way forward to to other profession to follow the framework will be of value of practitioner for years to come so uh, we already answer all the research questions and uh, so maybe some of you uh, ask will ask question what is the benefit of this uh, research the finding of the research what can we do with this result yeah this is the application of the research that it will benefit for individual for uh, employer and academician so number one for individual practitioner uh the practitioner yeah, can use this this result as a guidance yeah as i mentioned before to assist yeah the individual to assess the assist individual assess their own performance in the capabilities they deem important to enable them yeah so they would know that well wow, this these capabilities have i have to uh, master these 10 capabilities and another dozens of uh, sub capabilities in order to become successful uh, pr practitioner so uh, <clears throat> it's a it's kind of a guidance for employers the result from a group of individual can be collected using the software to spread the distribution of capability strength and cross so uh, the the employer can measure their uh, practitioner uh, to uh, if they have the same uh, uh, PR capabilities that uh, they think is a uh, need to be mastered, uh, so they will know there is if there is a gap. Yeah, uh, analysis of capabilities that are regarded as important that can be undertaken and individual as and group goal can be established and monitored. So. <clears throat> last one uh, the application for educator this framework can be used as a tool for curriculum review so maybe in our college for example in uh, in london school of public relation we uh, uh, have a curriculum of course but based on this result we, we can see that there is uh, some elements that need to be updated updated yeah so it's this kind of a uh, curriculum review and the academic and professional courses can map their content against the capabilities they can also design content to enhance particular capabilities such as addressing gaps between future importance and current performance of a capability yeah this is our uh, finding from interview uh, this is from Prita Kemalgani uh, former chairperson of upper humas he, he said that all related parties can take advantage of the result of this research by knowing what academics have or have not taught their student at their respective educational institution yeah so that they later they will comply with national and international standards so uh, the objective of this uh, project is also to standardize the education 
around the world yeah so we hope that we can uh, make our standard is uh, in international standard moreover it is also fruitful for employer to know what capabilities their pr practitioners should have and need to improve whether they work in government organization or companies thank you very much uh, that's all for my uh, presentation Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rendra Dani, for that uh, for that presentation. Um, now is the time for our question and answer portion from our audiences. So, um, if anybody has a question, you can raise your hand or you can uh, type in your questions here in the chat box. Okay. So, I think Dr. Rendro is uh, now ready to, um, you know, entertain some answers from our audiences. So, anyone? Krish? Okay, sir. Uh, yes, sir, Fritz. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Rendro, Danny. Uh, good afternoon. I, I understand that the research that you conducted was actually in the public relations discipline. Yeah. Or it's actually in the field. I am just curious if, if the same capability framework can be used to other disciplines for example can we use that uh, can we replicate that uh, that study to other areas also like for example in understanding capabilities of educators or teachers for example or what else uh, maybe uh, aside from communication practitioners or PR practitioners is it possible sir yes of course uh, uh, we have uh, discussed with our uh, mentor that these uh, methods of research is uh, designed with the Western model uh, that aim to uh, mapping the capabilities for PR. But of course, these uh, research design can be used for others uh, major or other uh, other uh, job that uh, yeah we can uh, modify it and a little and modify for example in Indonesia we have very limited uh, number for a survey and we modified it to uh, focus group discussion that's for for example but uh, uh, However, we think that this uh, research design is very good um, that fit for other research for other subject. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dan. I just like I have a follow-up question, Sir Dani. Um, the, you use actually three methods, right, sir? The Delphi yes. method, you, you've, you've also had the survey, right? Survey, sir? Yes, yeah, survey, but we failed to. <laughs> to reach yeah. the minimum yeah minimum okay. respondents so, how many yeah. respondents yeah. how many respondents do you have in your research sir and uh just just i'm just very curious that uh what's what is actually the the advantage of having these free research methods in your research like applying for example of delphi method there's also a survey method and just to maybe to triangulate it, you use also focus group discussions. What 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 makes these uh, free combinations of free methods very very special to your research? Yeah, uh, first in Delphi methods, we the the intention is to uh, uh, collect any ideas on any opinion from academician and practitioner that. Uh, they think the most important thing of uh, public relation capabilities. So we doing these uh, Delphi methods in three rounds in order to, from the so many capabilities that uh, the participant uh, sent to us in on the list, and then we filter it 
in the second round and we filtered again we asked them again so we finally find found the uh, 10 capabilities so after that we test this uh, result in the survey basically we want to uh, uh, wide uh, uh, wider wider result from the participant yeah from around the uh, countries in uh, so many uh, city but unfortunately uh, we have <laughs> very little we only have 38 particip uh, respondents uh, and I asked uh, to Professor Anne Gregory so uh, professor we only have uh, 38 uh, respondents for about three months <laughs> we only already uh, sent again and again but uh, actually uh, yeah in uh, the characteristic of indonesia maybe yeah, indonesian people it's uh, lazy to fill in the uh, survey so that's okay she said and because uh, at least we have to uh, collect uh, around 100 uh, respondents yeah that is considered strong uh, because uh, uh, 38 is uh, yeah too too um, so too little yeah so few that so we uh, asked again to professor n uh, about uh, the change the the research design uh, another uh, many countries some countries also do the same yeah it depends on the characteristic of the uh, people in the countries for example in the Europe in the Western the survey can have uh, can collect so many uh, respondents yeah so uh, we cannot continue the, the second the second uh, step of the uh, uh, data collection so we jump into the focus group discussion actually uh, three group discussion focus group discussion is uh, is enough if we already have the survey but since we only have uh, a small number of respondent on survey then we increase the number of uh, participant in focus group discussion so the intention is to to test the result uh, to make it uh, more to to uh, to to obtain more opinion from the practitioner from the academician from the employer what what do you think about these uh, capabilities that we have we already have from the uh, the LT methods and then we discuss it what is the obstacles what is the opportunities of the uh, organization to reach this of or the or university yeah something like that and that is the the final result that we already enlist in yeah, listed in the our uh, full report 10 uh, capabilities as a guidance yeah as to standardize the practitioner uh, uh, capabilities and the curriculum also something like that thank you very much dr danny i think uh there there is actually question if there is a question from participants Krish. yes sir uh, i have a question here uh here in our group chat here it's from uh siegfried de vasquez uh good day dr rendro in instances like ours, uh, what can you advise our research students pertaining to the challenges in participation and gathering of data, especially during the new normal setup? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, Secret, yeah. Yeah. There is a separate uh, challenge. Yeah, during the pandemic, yeah, COVID-19, we uh, actually have... Uh, make a group discussion with online yeah uh, we will meet yeah, uh, platform uh, and this uh, we rarely do this uh, uh, online uh, group discussion so i suggest uh, i think that this is very helpful for 
collecting data uh, and you can wider the participant around the country yeah so for example if we do this in a face to face uh, for group discussion we only have maybe only in jakarta yeah, because i stay in jakarta but because we we did this in the online yeah uh, through online uh, discussion yeah virtual discussion yeah we can uh, invite many practitioner and academician for many cities so uh, i think it's very uh, useful yeah to do the online survey online uh, group discussion and so on is it okay. uh, answer the question uh chris uh dr yeah. dendro i I'd just like to to share also my my experience right now like for example in the new normal because uh uh, similar to my to my study because I'm actually conducting right now my study just just a lot less two months ago and I'm really having a hard time like how how can I actually conduct my study since I, I have to do a focus group discussions and I don't have already we I mean if you are going to see to see this the situation right now it's quite very hard for a researcher yeah. to have these kind of methods but on the other side of it i also realized that why is it that it's, it is just now that we realize that this could also be possible but my question i just have a question dr rendro that how can we ensure the reliability for example of having an online interviews for example in the case of focus group discussions or even focused interviews vis-a-vis -vis to the or for example, to in a face-to-face -face an interview, is there actually difference of of the data gathering or the reliability of the data that you are going to gather? Yeah, first of all, we uh, collaborate with the PR organization, Perhumas in Indonesia is the biggest organization of uh, public relation, and we ask the the chairperson or the chair uh, the the organization chair chairperson to uh, provide us uh, some uh, name some practitioner or some member of their organization that we want to ask them to join with our uh, group discussion so uh, and then we divided uh, this uh, the practitioner in the and the academician we use our networking that we think that this is a credible person that we want to have uh, discussed with them so we have we have to make sure first the credibility of the uh, respondent or the participant and then we did in a small number of uh, group yeah uh, uh, for example in one group discussion we only have maximum five or six uh, participants in in the group and we uh, uh, arrange this uh, discussion within around one hour it is kind of like face to face also because all of the participants open the camera so we can see each other yeah just just in a virtual way yeah just uh, also in the in the in the in the in-depth interview with the, our informant, we also did in the uh, one of them is uh, face to face before the pandemic, yeah, in the like, 2019, and the two of them in the after the pandemic. So we did is we did in the uh, virtual interview, but we first we. Uh, make sure that the person is uh, credible yeah yeah and yeah to make that uh, our result is uh, credible thank you dr Dani. i i think there's a there's a question from the audience Krish. yes sir uh thank you for that sir there's a question from uh joe phil patino i will read it for you sir uh good day dr rendro what are the challenges you encounter in creating this research aside from lacking of respondents as you have said earlier yeah uh, we encountered uh, a situation that we never faced before 
as we have to stay and work it at home during uh, March in March yeah I think March 2020 that the pandemic already began in Indonesia so we try to uh, yeah wait and see what what what's what uh, we have we, we what we have to do in during the pandemic yeah so of course uh, it's a little bit slow during the pandemics but uh, there is also opportunity for us to gather uh, and easy to to do because we did it in uh, virtual yeah in online yeah so uh, first we think it's a uh, uh, yeah uh, hampering our research but um, after that we think that this is uh, can be uh, we can do this easier because we don't have to uh, invite uh, and ask the participant to come to our campus for example so uh, it's so flexible for the participant to uh, so we ask uh, which they uh, you are available to join with our discuss, group discussion and then we collect them, grouping them. And we did it in uh, seven uh, group discussions, finally. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rendro. I hope, uh, Joe Phil, I hope you answered your question. Um, do we have another question from our audiences? So, uh, yes, sir, I, I, so I think uh, since this uh, project is uh, just uh, uh, only three countries did, did this uh, project, uh, Singapore, Indonesia, and Malaysia now is in the second step. Yeah, uh, I think this uh, research project can also be conducted in Philippines to measure what is the most uh, important capabilities uh, pr capabilities for uh, filipinas yeah because maybe there are different yeah i think the, there is difference uh, but uh, not not so yeah significant but at least uh, yeah you can measure that in in the philippines with their characteristic yeah the country characteristics maybe there are uh, the priority is different for example in ethical in ethics yeah uh, <clears throat> in the in the delphi methods we have the uh, highest uh, ranking yeah, position in the delphi methods result but in the group discussion uh, uh, some of the participant think that the, the ethics ethical uh, framework is not really important so uh, that is uh, yeah I think also can happen in other countries depends on the characteristic of the people yeah Okay, sir. Um, I just want to add something, sir. I, I it's not an additional um input, but I have a question uh, on on my own. Um, the question is for everyone who wants to make a research of their own but uh, doesn't know where to start. So my question would be, sir. Um, why did you decide to undertake that that research? Uh, this may be a little personal, but um, I just want to seek advice on what are your motivations for doing that research? Um, what makes you push hard to really finish uh, your research? And um, what do you think is, it, is its contribution to the body of knowledge? Yeah, that is a good question. Thank you. Yeah, um, uh, initially, a global alliance only picked up some countries, uh, nine countries, I think, yeah, that represent the region. So in Asia, uh, Southeast Asia, is already represented by Singapore. But our our uh, chief executive, yeah, uh, the owner of London School of Public Relation, have a good relation with the Global Alliance. Yeah, she is also member of Global Alliance, and uh, she asked that why not 
uh, we do this kind of research in our country because Indonesia is more is larger it's more uh, there are so many PR practitioner compared to Singapore for example so we have to do the same research to measure uh, what is the uh, PR capabilities in the Indonesian perspective so it was accepted then we are doing this research to uh, understand and to uh, yeah to mapping the the PR capabilities in our country that's it because yeah Indonesia is a big country you know it's 270 million people so why only Singapore Singapore cannot be a, a benchmark yeah uh, Indonesia yeah is uh, 270 million that have um, a lot of uh, practitioner there are so many uh, university and college that have major in public relations so why why not indonesia we ask them why not indonesia <laughs> and they agree and then there there is a, a second wave and we uh, one of the uh, second wave countries that uh, conduct the same research yeah yeah i think that's it okay thank you sir uh sir Chris, do you want to add something I think what Dr. Rendra is actually trying to see, it started with just a question of why. Why is it possible to others? And that, that's also very possible to, for example, in the context of Indonesia. Like, it's just a question of asking. It's a process of asking why. Uh, Dr. Rendro, uh, I'm sorry if, if you've mentioned it a while ago, but uh, the, the, the global capability framework is on the national scale, right? Yeah. Yeah. How many participants, sorry if you mentioned it but because I, I lost the, the, uh, the a while ago, uh, how many participants do you have of that national survey? National survey, we have only 38 response, uh, respondents and we dropped the data. We, we, don't, we don't use it. We didn't use it because what? it's so, so weak. <laughs> it's not strong enough. At least we have to reach uh, around 100 uh, mm -hmm. respondents. So we already waiting for three months, and uh, the number is not uh, grow. Yeah. So we we decide to to drop this uh, survey. Maybe in Philippines, uh, the so many people can uh, or want to participate in the survey. Maybe yeah. That is the uh, different character of the countries, but Indonesia, yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sir, my I, I just am very uh, interested only in the Delphi method because it's quite yeah. very new, might be to others. Although I, I read that in one of our classes before in research, uh, can you a, a little bit illustrate or expound uh, how a Delphi method is actually used in research in your case for example in in your in your research yeah first we identify some prominent uh, practitioner and academician that we think they can give their opinions regarding the PR capabilities so we uh, of course, we have to collaborate with the PR organizations in our country and we also use our networking to pick up some prominent uh, or senior uh, practitioner, yeah, and then we ask them to, would you like to join with, with our research project if we already uh, have at least 15 or 20 participants then we started to ask them their opinion regarding regarding uh, anything yeah regarding what you want to measure for this case in our case we we asked the participant to give their opinions regarding the uh, pr capabilities public relation and communication management capabilities what they 
protecting the most important capabilities for public relation and communication management. And we divide it in three columns, yeah, in three boxes, because if we only provide one box, it, it will be narrow, yeah. So the strategy, yeah, the strategy that we, so basically we received the research instrument from UK and we did the same methods that also being used for uh, by other countries, yeah, nine countries before us. So we did the same to make the standard, to standardize the research design. So the first time, we have to do by uh, collecting data by uh, Delphi methods and Delphi methods is a very good uh, methods to to uh, to uh, collect the uh, the elements that we want that we are looking for yeah so the first we have so many yeah the first round we are we have more than a hundred capabilities <laughs> elements mm -hmm. from three categories and we filter it out we match each other this one is similar with this and we uh, uh, yeah we uh, filter it and we categorize it uh, and uh, uh, found around and the second the second del that's the second round of del our delphi methods is uh, 18 yeah from hundreds yeah. yeah and then from the 18 we, we ask them again we ask the participant again what do you think about this uh, 18 uh, the these capabilities do you do you agree what what is this uh, if you want to rank could you pick up 10 of this 10 out of 18 from these capabilities that you are that you think is the most important thing so we uh, finally have uh, we finally have uh, 10 capabilities here so that is the delphi methods that we thank use you. three, thank you very three much. rounds yeah, yeah thank you sir Trish? you're welcome thank you very much sir um i i can't see any more questions do, you, do we still have other questions from our audiences It's a very complex uh, design, research design, I think, mm -hmm. yeah, for uh, our student, yeah. Maybe this is for the uh, postgraduate student. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. So? Thank you. Sir, uh, in terms of a survey, for example, uh, do you have any advice on, like, how to conduct a survey? Yeah, we uh, have a guideline from UK, from uh, uh, University of Huddersfield. We uh, receive a, a list of questions. So I have to say that this list of questions is too complicated. That's why finally we re realized that we cannot do this uh this uh apa namanya? the questionnaire is so many yeah there are so many which for the uh, western countries is normal maybe but in indonesia in our country uh, the the so many uh, questionnaires that we uh, put in uh, in our survey uh, is uh, finally can uh make people not interested to complete the survey so that's why we but we already uh, redesigned the question we we want we we can uh, simplify we have to simplify the uh, questions and send again but still not a good uh, response we have so i don't know is this it's too di do you think it's difficult to identify what is the most capabilities do you think for PR practitioner? Is it so difficult for a respondent to answer this one, this one, this is, this is, this is, this must be uh, the, the most uh, important uh, 
we use uh, some of the uh, uh, capabilities that we uh, send is uh, using uh, Likert, uh, five points, li uh, seven points of Likert scale. Uh, it's still, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it, it needs more time for uh, us to, to be patient, yeah, to, to wait for more uh, another two months or maybe three months to get uh, 100 uh, respondent but uh, i think uh, because we already in malaysia you know malaysia uh, we did the same uh, time with malaysia but malaysia is not yet finished until now yeah so yeah it's uh, very difficult yeah to <laughs> to complete all the steps <laughs> Mm -hmm. for uh, because you know uh, we are uh, under uh, supervisor by the professor N Gregory do you know uh, professor N Gregory from Huddersfield yeah uh, he's, uh, she's a prominent uh, public relation uh, academician yeah, academics uh, she monitored closely with our progress and if we did uh, yeah no you you have to drop this this is not this is not right <laughs> something like that for example mm -hmm. so uh, it's, it is not easy to do this research yeah because it's it's in the national scale sir so it's really yeah. expected that uh, it will really be very difficult because you you are going to generalize in, in the yeah. national national scale but uh is it also have a study sorry like similar studies like only in the local settings for example or in the regional level uh, regional uh in our country or regional in the region in the in your within the country no this is the the first time that we do okay. yeah or national not in the region uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, is it necessary? Because, yeah, we already did the national survey, eh, national uh, group discussion, national, yeah, yeah we did this uh, national level. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But maybe, yeah, maybe uh, there is a little difference of these capabilities regarding, uh, 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 it depends on the characteristic of the organization, for example. For example, there is one uh, participant said that in the mining company like us, she said, ethics is not work to, to be uh, yeah, prioritized here. Yeah, you know what? Because uh, local people here cannot understand how to communicate with ethical way yeah ethical uh, frame so uh, it's, it's, it's uh, based on uh, the cultural also and the situation of the uh, local uh, population okay I think uh, that that's all Krish my part that's all no one okay. No okay, more so questions? <laughs> I don't think we have more questions from our audiences. So thank you so much for all of you who gave your questions. Thank you, Sir Rendro Dani, for um, yeah. answering all of them. Your insights are really good. Thank uh, you very helpful, much. You're welcome. You know, for all of us. So at this juncture, we will be giving you our certificate. Yes. Uh, your, your certificate. So, uh, Sir, can you please share uh, to the screen the um certificate for sir danny okay thank you very much yeah. may i request sir ivan sir fritz for the certificate hello for a while for a while Krish. Okay, so while waiting for the um, for the certificate, I just want to remind everyone to please fill out the evaluation form 
for you to receive your certificates. Also, I want to acknowledge the Department of Communication and Media Arts of Davao del Norte State College and the London School of Public Relations, Indonesia, for making this event possible. Thank you so much. Uh, and also thank you to our guests, audience, and our students for attending this lecture series. So, um, sir, I think we have the... Um, Closing. I think we have, I think we have the certificate. Okay. Okay, here it is. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, let me read the citation first. Uh, certificate of appreciation is given to in grateful acknowledgement of his distinguished and invaluable service rendered as guest speaker during yes. the first Gregorio Duhali lecture series on communication research of Davao del Norte State College in partnership with London School of Public Relations, Indonesia, thereby contributing immeasurably to the prestige and success of the event. Given this eighth day of March, 2021, Signed, Jezebel, uh, Dr. Jezebel Arbesas, Director of Research Extension and Production. Signed, Dr. Gurley S. Gomana, Vice President for Academics and Research. And signed, Dr. Joy M. Sarosa, College President. The certificate is awarded to Dr. Rendra Dani. Let's give him a virtual round of applause. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sir Rendro. Yeah, so thank again, you. Um, for our participants, please don't forget to fill out the evaluation form. The link is here in our uh, chat box here in the Google Meet here, sent by Mr. Sigfred Devasquez. Thank you so much. And uh, that ends our the first of the three lectures that we will be conducting for this series. So there will be two more. One on uh, the next uh, lecture, see, the next lecture will be on March 29. Uh, 2 p.m. Philippine time and 3 p.m. South Korea time. The speaker will be Michael Prelier. He is a professor in the media school at Hallin University, South Korea. And the last lecture is on April 5, uh, 9 a.m. Philippine time. The speaker would be Mr. Kok Xiong Pong uh, from the Department of Public Relations, Faculty of Arts and Social Science, UTAR. Okay, so again, thank you so much uh, for the to the Department of Communication and Media Arts of Davao Norte State College, London School of Public Relations, Indonesia, for making this event possible. Thank you also to our audiences, guests, and students. Thank you to uh, Sir Daniel Fritzel Valiana for moderating this event. Thank so you. I so I think that ends our lecture series for today. Yeah. This, this has been Krishna Ramperas. Maraming salamat. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. And Terima see kasi. you again on the next lecture series. Yeah, bye. Thank bye. you, Dr. Rando. Yeah, see you.